Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of throw you a curveball. We, we kind of already talked about Morgan dollars and peace dollars, and we, got, we touched a little bit about the modern dollars. But what I'm holding in my hand now is, is an 1860-0 uh, Liberty Seated Liberty dollar, which, as you know, was designed by Christian Gobrick um, from the New Orleans Mint. Um, now, as, you, as we both know, New Orleans is a now defunct mint. Uh, what can you tell me about, like, Liberty Seated dollars or Christian Gobrick or just the, the New Orleans Mint in general in, in terms? of uh, minting silver dollars? Well, uh, Gobrick was an interesting guy in that um, he decided to shake things up a bit. All of our coins from 1793 on forward, um, you know, always depicted a head of liberty on one side and an eagle or a wreath or a shield or something on the reverse of the coin. Well, Gobrick decided, I'm going to do something a little different. He put a full-bodied Liberty on his coins, and Liberty was uh, seated on a rock holding um, a shield and, and holding slave cap uh, on, a, um, on a spear. And it was a totally different design from what had been done previously by any U.S. coin designers. Uh, so Gobrecht is really known for that. He's actually known for the um, uh, dollars that he designed uh, that went from 1836 to 1839, and they're named after him. They're called Gobrick dollars. But these were really more patterns than they were regular coins. The interesting thing about that particular coin, though, is it's an 1860 and 1860 was one of the last years um, that the New Orleans Mint was actually under control of the U.S. government. And that's because of the Civil War broke out um, in 1861, and the first people to uh, come to the Mint were uh, the people um, who were, were uh, Confederates working for the state of Louisiana. Louisiana, when it seceded from the Union in 1861, the first thing that they did is they went to the Mint in New Orleans and they captured it. There was no real fight there because all of the people who worked there were, uh, you know, from Louisiana and they were perfectly happy to now strike coins for the, the Confederacy. And they did try, they did uh, strike a, um, a, um, uh, a half dollar but they did know Confederate silver dollars. The mint wasn't in production for very long after the um, uh, Confederate uh, army took it over and uh, simply because the, uh, they didn't have an adequate supply of silver. But the reason that we even had a mint in New Orleans goes back to the 1830s when the government decided, you know, um, there's an awful lot of traffic being uh, coming up now up the Mississippi River and right at the mouth of that is New Orleans. So that would be a great place to have a mint. So a lot of silver came up from South America and from Mexico uh, to New Orleans and went directly to the mint there. But uh, it's a great coin and um, a, a fairly tough date. And having an, an old silver dollar with the O mint for New Orleans uh, is, is a great thing. Most collectors love those. Yep. And uh, we don't have an example of it here, but of course what came after was the trade dollar. Um, and I know that obviously there's a lot of uses for the trade dollar back in the 1870s. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about, you know, kind of the uses and why the trade dollar kind of came about? Well, um, we were trading an awful lot with Asia, particularly China at the time. And uh, what was happening was... Um, as we traded with them, they did not want to be paid in paper currency. In fact, they didn't even like gold as much as they liked silver. So we issued a coin specifically for use in the Orient, uh, as it was called at that time, in our, in, in our trade with uh, China and Japan for silks and for spices and for um, uh, teas. We always paid them as much as we could in silver dollars. Uh, and the trade dollar was the unit that they really wanted. It was actually slightly heavier than the Morgan dollars uh, um, actually are uh, today. And an interesting thing you'll find about trade dollars is for many, many years, collectors kind of shunned the coins that came back from, the, um, from China or from, from Japan that had these uh, countermarks on them. And it's a counter stamp. These were 
uh, stamps that were uh, individual for the merchants in China, and they would put their stamp on the coin to show that they had used the coin and that they were comfortable with the silver content in it. And they would have this little mark of a Chinese character on it. And for many years, collectors kind of avoided those. Uh, now today, they're very popular, very collectible, and the major grading services will um, uh, certify coins that have chop marks on them. So a trade dollar is a, a pretty interesting uh, coin to have. Thank you.